Hello, mm. Peter and Holly. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Afton Court. Um, <laughs> yeah. Who are you? Who are we? You go first. You go first. Um, my name is Holly Cole, and I live very locally. Actually, we're just down the road at Reading. Um, and married to Peter, the vicar's wife. <laughs> um, yeah, that's who I am. So well, she kind of gave it away. I'm Peter. I'm a vicar at a church in Reading. What are you doing now? Okay, so um, my working week is basically lots of different forms of teaching. Um, I'm a qualified secondary school teacher and half of my week is working with kids in a middle school in Old Windsor and I run a religious studies and philosophy department and the rest of the week is divided between teaching kundalini yoga to little tiny kiddies, two and three year olds and adults. Um, I run a Wednesday kundalini class, Sunday morning meditation classes and also um, do sound healing with gongs and bowls. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice mixture of teaching throughout the week. Mm. Yeah. In fact, we met through teaching as we trained to be religious studies teachers together many years ago. So that's, there is a teaching link with me too. I've been a, a teacher before, I've been a lecturer. Um, I still teach for the church. Um, I guess most people would think I was a liberal, although I think I'm very traditional. Um, I like to think of myself as being open to things rather than being one thing or another. How did you encounter Guru Daryl or Judy? Um, so I was um, an Aquarian baby, as we were coined. I did my training here in 2011, 2012. That was my level one Kundalini training. Um, and so on that training, I was taught by Guru Dharam and by Daryl. And Judy came and did a slot on one of those weekends. Um, and then I went on to do yoga therapy training. I've done module one with Guru Dharam and Judy came and did a full day's um, teaching and training with us, which was amazing. And that was really establishing a link with Judy then. And since I've um, you know, had a few emails with her and had a really good Skype call with her one-to-one. -one. Um, so yeah, I've been really fortunate to have you know, been trained by all of them and interacted with all of them. Yeah. And you? Well, uh, me, I mean, I think I, I could have heard a lot um, secondhand about both Judy and Darren, but it was at an event where they were both speaking down in London that I, I met them in the flesh, as it were. And it was strange that there was just an immediate, um, I don't know, there was just something very familiar about Judy and we sort of clicked rather, rather a lot. And I, I was very, I just warmed to her generally. And it was later when I was looking for a bit of direction in life and I was asking all sorts of people about what they thought I should be doing or what the, the next stage in life would be. And I just, I, I sort of said to Holly, do you think it would be worth speaking to Judy? Because I, I had that connection with her when I met her. So we arranged to have a Skype meeting and, uh, and it sort of went from there really. So that's how we met. And Judy has, we were just talking about this actually today, that Judy has this incredible um, gravity and wisdom about her. Mm. And we were saying it's just so nice knowing that there are people in the world who you just, are touchstones, you know, that yeah. you just feel, you know, the world's all right when there are people with that kind of wisdom around that you can tap really, yeah. Why did the relationship continue and how have you found it helpful? So, um, Sky for me, and particularly here at Ofton Court, I always say it feels like a second home. Um, I was saying to Peter on the way up tonight, I get really excited just <laughs> coming down the drive. It takes me back to my training and all the amazing people I met here. And um, yeah, my yoga therapy training has been here and I want to do my level twos at some point. So it just feels like family actually really does and I, I it's just you know sometimes I'll phone Daryl and ask him about something or go up to London to Guru Darren's classes it's just um it's spiritual family is what it is yeah yeah, yeah I mean I think for me the, the the conversation I had with Judy on Skype when it was there was no sort of bolt of lightning oh wow that's just told me everything I wanted to know but I think in many ways it just confirmed what I already suspected and um, 
Judy said that you know if I if I ever want to speak to her again, that's fine. But I think for the moment, I'm still working on what she said and what other people have said to me as well. So as I, I think in 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 the fact that she confirmed probably what I already knew, uh, and as Holly said, there is just something incredibly wise about her, and you can you can just feel it. It comes off her in waves. So and it's the best kind of guidance, right? Yeah. When someone just reflects back to you. Yeah. They help you to remember that you you know these things already. You yeah, just need something true. external to yourself to, to remind you of that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we just need to hear that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you doing now? Um, I think I'm still in the process of evaluating what I what I want to do next. How I want to do that. What I what I, do I know what I'm doing at the moment? I didn't know what no. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I know what I'm doing at the moment is the fact that I'm, I'm just doing what I can where I am now. But it's everything that I was asking Judy about is, is the next step. And so I'm still in the process of evaluating where I can be most useful. Because what I don't want to do is move somewhere else and end up just doing the same thing in a different location. I want to actually uh, be able to move it on to the next level, whatever that looks like. And I want there to be more of my own teaching involved in that. I want there to be more of social action in that. I want there to be more of communal living in that. There's all sorts of things. And it's it's how you bring these these strands together. And but you're basically managing and running a church. Oh, I'm, yeah, I manage and run a church at the minute. I'm trying to involve that in social action and, and keep the school involved and all sorts of things. I mean, it's, it's, it's already spinning a hundred plates, but I just want to know where the next hundred plates are and how I get to spin those as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, so it, it is a process of of realizing that, I, yeah, I can carry on doing what I'm doing, but it's it's getting ready to do whatever comes next, wherever that might be. Mm. And I want to, even though I, I'm open to being drawn somewhere, I'd like to put a little bit of planning in that so it doesn't come to too much of a shock. <laughs> How do you anticipate that developing? Well, that's a case of, uh, you know, if you can have your dream however you want it, fair enough. But I certainly see, as I was just having a, a conversation with uh, somebody here just now, I, I really see the idea of, I'm interested in running um, something like a retreat centre, not a retreat centre per se, but something along the lines of where people come together to be, to learn. Um, I see that as, as part of what I want to do next. I don't know what that looks like yet. That's something that I hope will come. Well, I hope I will know what it looks like <laughs> when it happens. But it's, uh, it's as we'd say in yogic terms, it's a dharma of service, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Of serving people, enriching people's lives, and really, I think, identifying your gifts and, and maximizing their potential to enrich other people. Yeah. And so not miss out on using what you've got. I think that's the problem that you get into a not a rut exactly, but you get into a groove where you think, well, this is what I do, and I often feel frustrated. I'm not, I'm not completely fulfilled in what I'm doing. So that's part of what I wanted to speak to Judy about. And you also, I think, you forget the value of the gifts that you have. Yeah. When we own gifts, we think everyone can do that. That's nothing special. Um, and it's not till other people say it to you enough, like, wow, you're really good at X, Y, and Z, that you that's think, true. oh, well, maybe that's true. And you start to own that a little bit mm. and realize that not everybody can do that. Well, not everybody can do that in the way you do in it. In the way that you do I it. Think that's it. You bring something of it. The trouble is we're all, we're all conditioned to think, well, that's just being a bit big-headed or whatever. But sometimes, actually, yeah, maybe you, you do do it in a way that nobody else does that people appreciate. So it's you worth do. exploring. Mm. Yeah, I very strongly believe that, and it's taken me years to figure this out, that, you know, everybody is a unique expression of God. Mm. Um, and, you know, if your self-worth or self-esteem is low, then you just think, actually, this is God's self trying to express God's self through me, and that's none of my business. I've just got to get myself out of the way. Um, and that's really empowering. Um, and I think when you get to that place, then you can really allow those gifts to develop and mature in a kind of, you know, without feeling egotistical about it. It's just like, wow, I'm really, really good at that. And I, I can see how the ripple effect of how I can help people with that, which is why I love, love, love teaching, you know, all sorts of age groups. 
Um, so yeah, you're going to go on to <laughs> create something bigger and more well, amazing. I hope so. And um, my big dream is to, um, I want to create some kind of school, some kind of education center for kids and for adults, which is focused on the cycles of the seasons. Um, so looking kind of, I suppose, humanology kind of teachings that we find in Kundalini Yoga of looking at lunar cycles and female cycles and energy cycles and Ayurvedic cycles and working with the seasons um, is something at the moment I'm nicknaming the school of the spirit. Um, you know, there is a huge need in our society for people to find quiet still spaces where they can just have time out and be taught to breathe um, and to understand about spirit being embodied and just falling in love with themselves. And so I wanna, with some other people as well, just start um, you know, weaving all these threads together of all the trainings that I've had, all the experiences I've had in my life, both negative and positive, and, and bring the fruit to bear in, in this kind of way, I suppose, in this school. And you know, and Peter and I, yeah, as Peter said, had this dream of some kind of retreat center or something. Mm. Um, I don't know what it looks like at the moment, and that's not really my business. <laughs> my business, our business, is just to show up. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how, whilst I don't think the two things, the dreams we have are too dissimilar, I don't, because it's very dr different traditions, I'm not sure how they'd mesh, but I think they can. And I think we realise that a lot of what people are looking for is what we're trying to, to sort of get at, I and mean, it's just very difficult to know how to do that. People are hungry, ravenously yeah, yeah, hungry. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people, there's a void that mm. you know, people are beginning to realize can't be filled with all the latest stuff, stuff exactly. Um, and I think that's where wisdom traditions and spiritual lineages can absolutely fill that void. And you know, whether it's coming from a, a Christian background or a Kundalini background, it's all working with that which is mystical and mm. um, putting the mystery back into life I think is a is absolutely an thing. yeah, yeah. Mm. In, a, in a language that people un can understand yeah. trying to take as many barriers out of the way as possible yeah yeah and for me it's about I mean my journey I came to yoga because I lived totally in my head totally in my head you know a lot of studying lot of academic stuff and and I wanted to get into my body and realize, wow, I have a body. And that's kind of my mission as well, is to help people realize that they have a body and that there's, you know, the mind is enmeshed with the body and how simple practices of yoga and breathing can, um, can take you into places of, of deep stillness, of sahaj, peace and intuitive ease. I'll have some of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if people would like to get in touch with you about your work, about your work in the future, how can they do that? Okay, so... Um, well, it's a business card moment, isn't it? <laughs> I have some of that. <laughs> um, Place I, upon the business card. <laughs> um, my yoga business, in inverted commas, is called Yoga White. Um, it's going to be a Dulux paint color one day. Um, yeah, yogawhite.com. Um, <laughs> <Farrah .com>. please. <laughs> yogawhite.com um, is where you can find me and what I'm up to. Yeah. Oh, if you want to find me, I'm the Vicar of Christ Church in Reading. It's a big pointy building, you can't miss it. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Holly and Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>